Okay, everybody, welcome to the show. Today we are doing some of the commonly asked questions that you might use in order to screen a real estate agent that you're thinking about working with. And there's a couple in here that I think are good and things that I, I think would be appropriate to ask, along with some that I edited out because I did not think they were appropriate to ask. As we get into it, you guys can subscribe to the channel. That helps. Drop us a comment. Um, and then if you guys need real estate help, just let us know. 1911syndicate.com. We work with a lot of military, law enforcement personnel, hunters, shooters, uh, like dudes. Definitely a dude culture around here, which is not to say it's only dudes, just it's kind of a bro culture, you know? And we work all over the country, so if you guys need help somewhere other than Utah where I live, we got you covered. Okay, let's go through some questions. So I found this via Google, just going, hey, what are some questions that people might ask when screening a real estate agent? Quite a bit of them I, I found to be just like, don't ask someone that. It's just, you know, there's some things that are appropriate and some things like, nah, dude, come on, basically don't be a dick sort of policy. So number one, do you, do I work directly with you or a team? That would be what you would be asking the, the agent. I think that question is completely fair and appropriate because there are people who, hey, I'm talking to this agent and I get the impression this is my agent. And as soon as I'm working with them to either buy or sell a house, I kind of get handed off to their team of people who are going to be you know, showing me the houses and writing the offers. And you're like, what happened to the guy that I was, I thought I was going to be working with? So this is a fair question. And it's pretty common that uh, big or big-ish agents will have um, either a small or big team to either help them with showings or wh whatever the thing may be, right? So you might not necessarily be working with the team leader that much as you may be working with someone else from their team. It's not a good or a bad thing that this happens, whether you work directly with the agent all the time or some members of their team. It's not good or bad, it's fine either way. All I'm suggesting is I think that should be communicated up front, which is what I typically, uh, or at least try to do with people. Hey, if they reach out and they go, hey, I need to buy a house in Utah, it depends on the situation, whether or not you're gonna be working with me or someone who uh, represents me, I guess, in a, in a sense, you know, which I don't know why that sounds weird, but uh, it, for some reason it feels weird. Um, so oftentimes if you are working with a team, it is actually in your best interest as a client because the person who has a team might be so busy that you go, they might not actually be the best agent to help you because they got too many things going on. And, and so just saying, don't, you know, think negatively on the team thing because sometimes it is a necessary thing in order for you to get a proper result. Next, when do I need to sign a buyer broker agreement? So this is one that I wrote down because I think this is something that is completely fair to ask an agent. So, hey, this will be in relation to buying a home. And there's an agreement that typically I just call it the Jake's your agent document, right? Because most people don't know what a buyer a buyer broker agreement is. Hey, it's the document that says Jake's your agent, which also means you are now attached to working with me. So I think it is completely fair to ask, when, when do you need me to sign that? Because I, I'm just going to tell you, personalize this. Let's say I was buying a house. I'm not in the real estate industry, but I understand the, the industry and I'm looking to buy a house. I would ask the agent, if an agent was like, hey, we're not doing any showings or anything until you sign this, cool, then I'm out. Because I don't know if you're good or not yet. What if it turns out you locked me into this agreement and you got no hustle and you're just a buffoon and you're completely incompetent and now I'm stuck per this document of basically having you represent me as my agent? I don't want that. I, I do want to test the waters with you a little bit. And at that point, as long as I'm comfortable with you, I have no issue signing one of those. I will tell you, I do not make clients sign one of these really until we're writing an offer. Hey, once it's time we're writing an offer, hey, I'm putting a, a contract in place that says I'm representing you on this deal. Therefore, I need that document in place. Otherwise, I'm lying on the contract and I can get in trouble for that. So I would ask the agent that if they are adamant that you sign it right away, I'd be a little skeptical. And if they're like, hey, I don't have an issue um, you know, working with you, just do me a favor, don't... <laughs> go and work with another agent behind my back, communicate if there's an issue, that way we can try to resolve it, that's perfectly fine. Next question, number three, are you a part-time or full-time agent? I think that's a fair question to ask. And again, it's not a bad thing if someone's part-time. Many people, especially in those first two, three, four years, whatever, they are part-time or maybe their entire career because they have a full-time job and they're really doing real estate as a means to 
um, you know, work with people that are kind of low-hanging fruit, friends, family, coworkers, things like that. It's not bad if they're in that position. But what I need to know from you is if you're a part-time agent, what kind of capacity do you have to make sure that this goes smoothly? Because if, if it's, hey, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 a.m., I'm completely un inaccessible because I'm at my job, it's like, well, what if we need to schedule a showing? Like, what if we need to reply to, you know, an offer we're writing or, or something like that? Like, hey, if you are doing this part time, you still have to make it a priority. Like, I can't get hosed on the service end because you still want to work a full time job. Like, I still have to get a good service. That's where I'm at. So if they're full time, great. If they're part time, no problem. But I need a no bullshit assessment of what is your capacity to make sure I get a good service? Next one, number four, have you sold any houses in this price range? To me, that one is a little irrelevant unless you're dealing with high-end price points. If, hey, let's just say I'm an agent and I really work in the $300 to $4,000 price point and someone asked me to sell a $5 million house, I think it's fair that they ask that because those are just different things, which is not to say that the process is particularly different. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still good photos, good price, house gets listed, I, I get people booked for showings, I field offers. At the end of the day, the thing is the same, but I think if there's a wide gap in, in the price point that you're interested in versus what the agent works in, at least it's a conversation and a half and bring up and just see how you feel about it at that point. Next, number five. Um, what are your listings average days on market? So this would apply if you were interviewing someone to sell your house. Caveat would be this. Most, it's almost like you as the person screening the agent, you need more information to know if the answer to this, like is it good or is it bad? Because what I need to know is, well, what are the average days on market for houses like mine? That, that's, that, that's almost the, the real question is, hey, agent, listing agent, you're showing me these comps of what my house is worth. You're saying, hey, your house is similar to these and these houses sold at this price. Cool. How long did it take those houses to sell? And then what is your average time to get a, man, it really is tricky, guys. Like that, it's a tricky question. At the end of the day, what you're looking for is an outlier. You're looking for an agent who their listings sit on the market for a long time because that tells you there's something fundamentally wrong. Either they are um, overpricing the houses, they're not doing good photos, they're not following up with people, there's something wrong. But it's almost like you need more data to really know what the answer tells you. Like, is the answer good, bad, and different? Like, so it's a tricky question. You can ask it, but it's not a surface level question. You're gonna have to dig a little bit to figure out what the reality of the data is. Last thing, um, what is your list to price ratio? I saw that on the internet and I thought, that's an interesting question. What it means is, what is your average, per what you list a house for, where do they typically end up? Do they typically end up, what they list for is what they sell for. What they list for, they sell higher than that. What they list for, they sell below that. And if below that, how much below that? That is a question that I think is fair to ask because again, it's telling me, one, it could be a little bit of the market, right? And in, in, in terms of, hey, is, is the market just shit right now and everyone's having to reduce their prices regardless of who your agent is? Okay, cool. They kind of get a pass on that. Or are houses selling for what they're listed at, except this guy's, except this listing agent's houses aren't selling for what they're listed for because they either sucks at running comps or doing photos, right? right? Something is fundamentally off, right? So that would be a bit of a red flag. So these are questions to ask. I think these are all fair questions. In some of these cases, it's almost like you don't have the full picture just by asking the question, but it might get the conversation started. So take all that with a grain of salt. Again, if you guys need real estate help, 1911seneca.com, happy to help you guys out. Um, and yeah, drop a comment if you got any. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time.